Hello everyone, my name is Shannon Singleton and welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about herpes transmission. And now those for you who are new here, make sure you go subscribe. Every Monday I will be uploading a video with a herpes tip. Every Tuesday, we're going to just talk about herpes 101. And then every Friday, we are going to dive into the stigma and how to break the stigma for ourselves. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad that you found me. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Shana Singleton and I'm also known as the herpes goddess. I am the founder of Slay the Stigma, which is a course program where I help women stop their outbreaks and get laid. It's kind of my magic. But outside of that, I'm also the founder of Hey Cousins and responsible for growing the largest herpes awareness platform. So if you're searching for support or community, feel free to go down below in my description and get access to all your herpes resources. Now, I've been researching this virus for the past seven years now. I've been living with the virus for almost a decade now, and I've been coaching people within the community within the past four years. I am the only advocate in the space that is a member of the National Coalition of Sex Health. I am also an author of several different books. I'm also responsible for creating other advocates and influencers within the space. I'm not here to teach you how to coach. I am a, transform a transformative coach. So I will make you feel comfortable enough to even want to speak about it publicly. And that's not even my goal. So I'm glad to have you here. Welcome. If you're someone who is just finding out you have herpes, I just want to let you know that there is life after a positive diagnosis, right? There is happiness after a positive diagnosis. You just have to give your mind space to believe that for yourself. So again, subscribe. If you're someone new, I highly suggest you subscribe just for our Friday videos when we dive into the stigma. Now, you all came, in, came over here to learn about transmission. So let's get into it, right? How is herpes transmitted? The herpes simplex virus is primarily transmitted through direct contact with the affected area of the skin or mucous membranes during periods of virus, viral shedding. This can occur through sexual contact, including vaginal, anal, or oral intercourse, as well as through non-sexual contact, such as kissing or touching an infected area. The virus enters the body through small breaks in the skin or mucous membranes and can remain dormant in the body for long periods of time, with reoccurring outbreaks triggered by factors such as stress, illness, or a weakened immune system. Whew, that was a lot, right? All right, let me Barney style this for you. So say if I experience my outbreaks here, and it's the only area in my body that I experience my outbreaks. This is just an example. Everyone's outbreaks is gonna show up differently on their body because everyone's virus entered in a different place. Well, my outbreak is an indication that the virus has entered my body here. So this is now my outbreak site. This is now my virus's point of entry. For there to be a possibility that someone can get herpes from me, they will have to come in contact with this area. And even if they do come in contact with this area, it's not guaranteed that they'll get herpes from me. We are the most contagious during viral shedding. Viral shedding is when the virus replicates, okay? It's releasing particles. Barney style, the virus is basically having babies. So again, for there to be a possibility for a transmission, your partner has to come in contact with the virus's point of entry. So if you are trying to lessen or prevent transmission, my advice would be to prevent, to prevent, oh, to create a barrier between your virus's point of entry and your partner to better protect them. 
Example, I have HSV1 and HSV2 both down below. My HSV1 shows up on the left side of my clit and my HSV2 showed up at the very bottom of my vulva on the right hand side. Now, like I said, I help women stop their outbreaks and I haven't experienced outbreaks in years, but there once was a time I used to get them back to back to back to back to back, y'all. I had to go on a whole journey to learn for myself, but that's besides the point. Now, for me to best protect my partner, I must communicate to my partner my outbreak sites, right? And if I want to further protect my partner, I must create a barrier between my outbreak sites and my partner. Another way I can protect my partners are by is by refraining from sex when I am going through viral shedding. Now, having an outbreak is an indication that I am going through viral shedding. So I won't have intercourse during an outbreak. I won't have intercourse during my prodromal symptoms. Prodromal symptoms are symptoms that can occur seconds or days before an outbreak. Also an indication that I am going through viral shedding. We also know that we are more susceptible to having a herpes outbreak whenever our immune system shuts down, right? So whenever I'm feeling ill, stressed, dehydrated, my immune system is being wicking, I got the sniffles, I got a cold, I am going to refrain from sex to better protect my partner. I hope that helps you all. If you're searching for more information, I wrote a whole book about it. I have a whole community Go to the description box below and dive into your resources. Now, before I go, I also want to talk about whether or not you can spread herpes to other areas of your body. That's always a question, right? Well, yes, it is possible to spread herpes to other areas of your body through the process called auto-inoculation. Auto-inoculation occurs when the virus is transferred from one part of the body to another. This can happen if you touch a herpes sore or blister and then touch another part of your body without proper hand hygiene. For example, if you have a cold sore in your mouth and you touch it and then you touch your eyes, you can potentially spread the virus to your eyes. It is important to be cautious and practice good hygiene to minimize the risk of auto inoculation. Avoid touching your herpes sores or blisters during your first few outbreaks. But here's the thing. Auto inoculation is not always possible. Once your body develops antibodies for the virus, auto-inoculation is no longer possible. So we should only avoid auto-inoculation in our beginning stages. But once our body has created the antibodies to fight the virus, we can no longer pass the virus to different areas of our body. That's no longer possible. So you may come across a person who has multiple outbreak sites because they probably was unaware of when they contracted the virus. And that is when their body did not have any antibodies and it was a, an auto inoculation was possible. Now, as somebody who has been living with the virus for almost a decade now, I can no longer pass the virus to different areas of my body. I hope this explains transmission to you all. Please like, share, subscribe. Support is free and your girl needs it. Trust me. This line of work is not easy. I'm out on the internet telling my business, talking about my vulva and my herpes. So please subscribe. Join us every Monday for tips. Join us every Wednesday just for knowledge and information. And join us every Friday so that we can break down this stigma. Welcome. For three free strap for Three strategies on how women are stopping their outbreaks and creating fulfilling relationships. Go to www.coachshanasingleton.com. See you later.